Welcome everyone. Today I want to do a quick video to talk about Cyborg's new just-in-time elevation on target endpoints with vaulted accounts through our identity security platform. So before we start, let's first kind of take a look at what has been available for uh, a while now, and that is basically the ability to access target systems. In this case, I'm going to show Windows using a vaulted account. So vaulted within our privilege cloud platform with DPA or dynamic privileged access. Now, in this scenario, the vaulted account is a regular user, but that regular user is part of the server admins group. And that server admins group has access to all of our target systems. So in this scenario, this, this server admin, you know, if, if this user was compromised, has access to every single Windows system within the environment. Now, this is, of course, a small lab, so it's not that big of a deal. But in production, you often end up with users that have access to a wide plethora of systems. This user is vaulted. It is protected. Um, it's being rotated very frequently, so it is fairly secure. Uh, but it still has that standing privilege. So let's take a look and just show you the user. So in this case, it's server admin one. We can see that it's vaulted. We can see that it's compliant. It's been rotated frequently or recently. It's also been verified recently. If I go over to my domain controller, which I am accessing through our, our session management um, provided by Privilege Cloud, we can take a look at server admins OU, look at the server admin security group. And if we look in that security group, we'll notice that the server admin one user and server admin two user are members of that group. This group is then mapped to like the local administrators group on target systems. If I want to use it, I can go over to DPA, uh, dynamic privileged access, choose vaulted credentials under connection guidance, put in this username, the target that I'd like to connect to, and then I can hit the RDP file from here. Now note that I've already gone through secure MFA to access this portal. So my MFA is already going to be provided. And what's happening now is our service is basically checking that account out of our vault, making sure that my user has access to the account, kind of all the checks and balances, and it's going to broker my connection into that target system. Now it lets me know that I am connected. My duration is two hours. The key here is this account even though it's vaulted, it's under management, it's being rotated, this account has pretty much standing access to this target system. So if I come here and I look at, um, let's say local users and groups, I can come over and look at the users. I don't see the account here, but if I come over to groups and I look at, uh, let me find the right one, remote desktop users, I can see that server admin security group is here. And if I come over to administrators, I can see that server admin security group is here as well. So in this scenario, like I mentioned, this user has pretty much that, that standing access to this target system. Um, we are again, protecting it via privilege cloud. It is being audited, it's being rotated, et cetera. Um, but it is an account that if it gets prom compromised, it, it has that standing access. So, what I want to show now is what this would look like using what we um, call just-in-time elevation. So in this scenario, I have another account, which is this server just-in-time one. Now, the really cool thing with this account is it's only in the users group on my domain. So if I come over here and look at the domain, and I go to just-in-time admins and I take a look at this account, look at properties, um, member of, you'll see that it's only a member of domain users. Now, the benefit here is if this account was to be compromised that just in time one, it's a member of domain users, it's pretty low risk, there's no permissions assigned to it. And how we are going to use it is we're still going to use our identity security platform. The difference is we're going to use the identity security platform to put that user into a specific group or specific groups on a target endpoint. So I'm going to try to connect to the same target endpoint that I was previously connected to. 
However, I'm gonna use that just-in-time user. So let's go back here to connection guidance. Only thing I'm going to change here is I'm gonna change the user that I would like to use, which is that just-in-time number one. And I'm gonna check this box for just-in-time elevation with vaulted credential. Now what this is going to do is it's going to look at my reoccurring access policies and see if there are any policies that apply to my user and the target endpoint that I'm trying to connect to. If there are, we're going to use our strong account, which is a vaulted kind of service account to place this just in time user into the appropriate local groups on the target system. So that's again what is occurring right now. Basically all of that logic is happening where one, we're checking to make sure my user has access to the just in time user account. We're checking policies to see what policies apply to my user and the target system. And then dynamic privilege access is placing that just in time user in the appropriate security groups. So if I go ahead and open up local users and groups again, this time we'll take a look at users again we don't see that user here but if we look at groups and we look at remote desktop users you'll notice that in addition to server admins and this other security group here vendor alpha we also have the user server just in time dash one uh, now this is all controlled by the dpa policy that is in place You'll also notice that under this DPA admins policy, I also have server just in time one um, as part of this DPA admins group. When we go and take a look at the policy, you'll notice that the policy is defined to place this user into these two groups. Now, in this scenario, uh, I believe that DPA admins policy is also tied to our um, CyBark endpoint privilege management so we can even control things um, like what that user can do. So even though I didn't place it into the local admi admins group, it still has access to do administrative functions. So take a look down here at the bottom right and you'll see that EPM is telling me that this was launched with elevated permissions even though that server just in time admin is not part of our local admins group we're controlling that with EPM in this scenario. So kind of a cool mashup of the various privilege capabilities that we have. One, automatically assigning the user to local groups, and then two, using EPM to control what permissions that user has. Instead of using, like, instead of placing me right into the local admins group, we're just gonna use EPM to control what I can and cannot elevate on this target system. So the major benefit here, uh, I think, in this scenario would be the user, again, is only part of that local domain users. It is not part of the um, server admins, domain admins, or any security group that gives them access to a wide plethora of systems. Um, so this is a pretty cool feature that's just been put into place. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And now we're gonna take a look at kind of what happened during that process. So if we look at session diagnostics, we can come over, we can see the first session was server admin one. It used that vaulted credential. Basically it just authenticated me, made sure I can use that account, established the tunnel um, to my target system. And then when I was done, it closed the session. Alternatively, if we look at this just in time one account, there's gonna be a lot more activity here, right? So the first thing is authentication again, checking my access policies to see what applies. It even tells me, oh, the rule name is security team access, um, the target system, the tunnel, and then the provisioning here where it elevated me. It says it successfully elevated my permissions and it put that user in the DPA admins group as well as the remote desktop users group. After we close the session, we removed that user from the DPA admins group and the remote desktop users group. Again, super powerful because now we're controlling all of that authentication and authorization through a single control plane and that user is a standard basic user with no permissions on the target system. If we come over to reoccurring access policies, we'll just take a look at that policy. It's this all platforms policy and 
we're defining the system based on fqdn. so in this case, i have it matching like a wildcard or containing a specific name and then we have the rule here where it says security team access, right? and if we take a look at this rule basically it says, hey, for windows targets add the user to remote desktop users and add them to a specific custom group. i could easily select administrators I could also easily have multiple rules so that if one user tries to access the Windows system, it puts them into these two groups. And if another user tries to access the system, so in this case, let's say ops admin instead of ops team access, right? Instead of security team access. And for this one, maybe we choose a different set of users for this rule to apply to. And this becomes very powerful because now I can create a rule for one team that lets them access the system as maybe just a read only or you know a standard user and i can create a rule for a separate team that lets them access it as that local administrator again the really powerful piece is that account is not always just sitting in local admins on every single system in my environment